Where is Jesus? Jesus, according to scripture, is in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. But I like this song. It says, uh, he's big enough to rule this mighty universe, but small enough to live in my heart. Amen. And so, tonight I'm going to just talk about uh, the parable of the wise and foolish virgin. The parable of the wise and foolish virgins. What can we learn about prayer? What can we learn about our relationship with God? What can we learn about the sanctuary? What can we learn about what Jesus is doing for us today and the kind of attitude and the kind of relationship that we need to have at this time? So I'm going to begin with a question. Fact or fiction? And the question is, well, fact or fiction, statement, we are living in the great day of atonement, the investigative or pre-advent judgment. Is this fact or fiction? For some people, it's fiction, but according to Scripture, it is what? It is a fact. The fact is, forgiveness and cleansing is available for us today. Amen? Amen. Whatever you, whatever mistakes you have made, whatever challenges you are facing in your life today, Jesus Christ offers us forgiveness and cleansing. Amen? Only Jesus can cleanse us. And it may be difficult for us to understand that, but that is true. He created us uh, through sin we fell and we make mistakes at times. But Jesus has the ability to cleanse us from our sins. The Bible says, if we confess our what? Our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is the fact. That is the what? So tonight, I want to encourage you to come to Jesus. I want to encourage you to seek Jesus. Seek his forgiveness. But not only his forgiveness. Seek his what? His cleansing. Jesus did not come to save the righteous, but he came to save who? He came to save sinners like you and me. We are now living in the great day of atonement. The work of preparation is what kind of work? An individual work. We are not saved in groups. The purity and devotion of one will not offset the want of these qualities in another. Though all nations are to pass in judgment before God, yet he will examine the case of each individual with as close, with as what? Close and searching scrutiny as if there were not another being upon the earth. Everyone must be tested and must be found without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Talking about tests and exam, we all must face this test. Now, when I was nine years old, I got baptized at nine years old. And I must admit that I did not fully understand what it meant to, to give your life to Christ. I did not understand. But my parents encouraged me to get baptized. And I remember that day that I got baptized, I said to myself, Oh, now after this day, I cannot do bad things again. 
That was it. Now, I want to let you know that after I got baptized, I did many bad things. By the time I was 17 years of age, Jesus came and rescued me. Amen? And, and, and Jesus, Jesus turned my life around and pointed me back to himself. And I remember at age 17, I was, I, 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 I said, Lord, I was in high school. And I remember I started to develop this deep desire to know God at age 17. I, I, I had to answer questions such as, is there a God? When I pray, what happens to my prayer? At age 17, I went through a crisis, and this crisis was, was one that, that God was using this to help me to understand that I needed to have a personal relationship with God. Hey, what? I was a part of the church. I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist, but I did not have a what? A personal saving relationship with God. I understood the scriptures based on what my parents taught me, based on the messages that I heard at church. But I tell you the truth, most of the messages that were preached, I did not remember. What I remembered were the, uh, the, uh, the Bible verses and the books of the Bible and all the stuff I learned at Sabbath school all the memorization stuff that was in my, that, that all the stuff that I had to memorize, I remember that. But I was not paying attention. What I would do, I would spend time talking with my friends in church. I would zone out the preacher, and by age 17, I was lost. But Jesus came and grabbed me. By the time I was uh, 20, uh, uh, in, in my early 20s, I, I said, Lord, I am going to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I am going to serve you with all my heart. To cut a long story short, I met someone in my community that was thinking the very same thing, and years later, we got married talking about marriage at midnight. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Do not let your mistakes hold you back. The Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he rebukes and chastens. Be zealous therefore and do what? God will have to rebuke us. He will have to chasten us. He sent, uh, he sent Adam and Eve out of the garden. But does that mean that, does that, mean that God doesn't love, didn't love Adam and Eve? He sure did. In Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five were what? They were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. As Christ sat looking upon the party that waited for the bridegroom, he told his disciples the story of the ten virgins by their experience, illustrating the experience of the church that should live just before the second coming. So we are the what? We are the virgins. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 2, For I am jealous over you with what? 
godly jealousy, for I have espoused you, says Paul, to one husband, that I may present you as a what? Chaste virgin to Christ. Paul was preaching to what? To the church. What about the lamp? What's the lamp? Thy word is a what? Lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I remember at age 17, I was in high school. And when Jesus came and he grabbed me and he put me through a crisis, and I recognized, wow, man. And I started to study my Bible. I finally started to study my lesson study, my quarterly. Finally started to pay attention. And you know what happened? A few months afterwards, I was studying with a friend under a big tree at school. And you know what happened? My mom gave me a book on the mark of the beast. So my mom didn't give me anything soft to help me. <laughs> and I recognized that, whoa, the Bible is true. These prophecies are being fulfilled. And I took my Bible myself, studied myself, went and found a friend with the help of the Holy Spirit, share with him the gospel. He wasn't the Seventh-day Adventist. You know what happened? He got baptized. When I started to have a personal relationship with God, God began, God did not, God began to use me immediately. And he used me to share the gospel with a friend in public school who got baptized, became a Seventh-day Adventist. And then he started to ask me to come and share the gospel with his other friend. And I got excited about the gospel. You see, what young people need is the gospel. We need the word. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a what? And a light unto our path. So what about the oil? The spirit of the Lord is upon me says Jesus, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are what? Oppressed. God, Jesus, Jesus wants to bring liberty and freedom into your life. Amen? And when, when we have a personal relationship with God and the Spirit of God is in our lives, that's what we will do for others. You know, Jesus is in the heavenly sanctuary. And the Bible says that he is interceding on our behalf. He's actually praying for us. So if we are followers of Christ, what, what, what should we be doing? We should be praying for others. We should be interceding for others. Jesus is not gossiping. Jesus knows everything about each of us, and he is not He's trying to help us. So at this time, through the help of the Holy Spirit, this is what we should be doing. We should, we, we, should, we should be anointed with the Holy Spirit to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set, to set at liberty those that are oppressed. The most oppressed, the most downcast among us are the ones that we should seek to help. Amen? Amen. Peter said that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the what? With the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And that's what happened to me at age 17. I started going about in my community trying to find people that were oppressed, young people, old people. And as I worked for the Lord, I was revived I was so revived. It was a blessing. And then I met a young lady that wanted to do the same thing. And before you know it, we were working together for the Lord. Amen? And we're still doing that. The oil is a symbol of what? The Holy Spirit. Thus, the Spirit is represented in the prophecy of Zechariah. The angel that talked with me, the angel that talked with me, came again. He says, and, and, wa and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? 
And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick of gold with a bow, with a bowl, sorry, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is what? This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Now in Matthew chapter 25, the church experiences a tarrying time. While the bridegroom tarried, they all some slumbered and what? Slept. Watch ye therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Let's talk about the bridegroom. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the, the, the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said unto them, Cast can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. So Jesus is the what? The bridegroom. The bridegroom. Now, the next phase in their experience, the experience of the virgins, was the midnight cry and the trimming of the lamps. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go we out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for the lamps are, for our lamps are what? Gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. What we need is what? A personal, saving relationship with God that is real or, of, or authentic, not just head knowledge, but a what? But a new heart. If you want to make a difference in your life, what we need to do is to take personal responsibility for our relationship with God. What are we doing with our prayer time? What are we doing with the Bible? We have full access to Jesus. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit at hand. And that's what I had to learn as a, young, as a youth. I, need to come, I needed to come out of that, that place of, 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 of just being a nominal Christian. And that's where I, were, that's where I was, sorry, as a Seventh-day Adventist. And I was lost. And Satan was taking advantage of my life. And I needed a personal relationship with God. And while they went to buy the bridegroom, came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut so what is the coming of the bridegroom well there are a number of scriptures that along with Matthew chapter 25 are speaking about the same thing, the coming of the bridegroom. Now in Matthew 25, the bridegroom what? Came, and they that were ready went into the marriage. In Daniel chapter 7, the Son of Man came to the Ancient of Days with the clouds of heaven. In Malachi 3 verse 1, the messenger of the covenant came uh, suddenly, uh, messenger of the covenant shall suddenly come to his temple. In Matthew 22 verse 11, the king came to see the guests to investigate their wedding garments. And in Daniel 8, verse 14, says, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be what? Cleansed. Revelation chapter 4, verse 7 says, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. 
Revelation 11 verse 19 says, The temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his testament was seen. According to scripture, if we study it more deeply, the coming of the bridegroom is the investigative judgment. Now, Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now, at Venice Home, well, AH 26.2, uh, Pen of Inspiration tells us that when it comes to the marriage, when it comes to what? The marriage in Scripture, there are two perspectives. There's that spiritual marriage, that what? And there is also a prophetic marriage. Christ honored the marriage relation by making it also a symbol of the union between him and his redeemed ones. He himself is the bridegroom. The bride is a church of which, as his chosen one, he says, Thou art all fair, my love, there is no spot in thee. Then, in another quote, Spirit probably says, The new Jerusalem, the bride, the bride represents the what? Holy city, and the virgins that go out to meet the bridegroom are a symbol of the church. In Revelation, the people of God are said to be the guests at the marriage supper. If guests, they cannot be the bride. Christ will receive, they cannot be the bride. Christ will receive from the ancient of days in heaven dominion and glory and a kingdom. The new Jerusalem, the capital of his kingdom, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, having received the kingdom, he will come as, a, as king of kings and lord of lords for the redemption of his people who are to partake of the marriage supper of the Lamb. So according to scripture, the investigative judgment is the what? Coming of the bridegroom. Okay? And right now, the investigative judgment is what? It's taking place. But, is at the time of the investigative judgment that the bride, that the, that the, the virgins are to enter or they entered into the marriage? spiritually speaking. And then there is a close of probation. After probation is closed, then we are going to be guests at the marriage. And as, and as, and as, and as, and as we study this topic closely, you will see now, the coming of the bridegroom is the marriage. The coming of the bridegroom is the investigative judgment, and the marriage takes place after the investigative judgment happens. When Jesus receives the new Jerusalem as his bride. Now, what's the point? The point is, if we want to be a part of God's kingdom, if we want to be a part of the marriage supper of the Lamb, we should do what? We need, if we want to be a part of the marriage, when Jesus comes as the marriage supper of the Lamb, we need to enter into the marriage when? Now. You can't wait until after probation to enter into the marriage. And that is why this hour of God's judgment is very important. It is now that we have to enter in, spiritually speaking, so that in a literal sense, we can enter into the marriage when Jesus takes possession of his kingdom and the new Jerusalem is the capital of his kingdom, according to scripture. I remember, as I close, during my time of when God was... Uh, transforming my life at age 17. That was a transitional moment. I know that a lot of young people at that age, God really understands that that age is pivotal. So I, I had a dream. I don't like to talk about dreams. 
And I was walking down a street, and I was trying, and, and, as I, and as I walked down that street, I looked and I saw the great controversy. I saw good angels, and I saw what? Evil angels. And it was scary. And I looked to my right, and I saw a home of a church member, and I was trying to take refuge in her home. And she stood at her gate like this. The gate was locked, and I could not enter into that gate. I then recognized that I was on my own. So I kept walking, and I kept looking. I was looking at my church. I was looking at my what? My church. And as I looked, I could see the great controversy of, uh, happening ab around, the good angels, bad angels. And at the end of my dream, I saw something rising up behind my church. What did I see? I saw a city. I saw a what? I saw a city. God in my dream was communicating to me. And God was saying to me, one day I'll be there. One day I'll be there. But right now, I need to give my life completely to him Amen. and enter in to the marriage now while the investigative judgment is taking place. As we pray, there are two things that came to my mind as I, as I thought about this. Pray that God will help us to develop a personal, saving relationship with Him. Amen? And number two, pray that God will help us to receive the gift and anointing of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we will not be able to make it. And Jesus is our example. Jesus is what? He's our example. Jesus had a personal relationship with God, and God anointed him with the Holy Ghost. And one day, he's coming back for you and for me. Do you want to be there? If you want to be there, enter in now. Enter in now and have a personal relationship with Christ and ask the Lord to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. <clears throat> dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, dear Lord, that you will Help us to have a personal relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to depend on others to have that relationship. And thank you, Lord, that you came to save those that are lost. Lord, I pray that you will help us at this time, in this solemn hour of the investigative judgment, that like the wise virgins, that you will help us to enter into the marriage during the time of the investigative judgment, so that when you shall come, we will be there with you. Lord, bless us. Give us hope. We pray for the Holy Spirit, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us for a prayer meeting. Feel free to continue praying wherever you may be. We believe that prayer changes things. If you have been blessed by this program, why not leave a special prayer request or praise report in the comments below and we'll share it with our prayer team. May God be with you.